The power of the governor's veto pen over Wisconsin budgets used to be mighty. It's faded over time and now faces a fundamental test. The state Senate is finishing up the two-year budget today, getting ready to send it to Governor Evers' desk. Naomi Coles joins us now from the Capitol to explain what the governor can do with a budget that's filled with items he doesn't necessarily like. Naomi? That's right, there was a time when the Wisconsin governor's partial veto power was considered one of, if not the most uh, powerful veto in the entire country. Now, the state Supreme Court decision last year has put a lot of that in question. It threw out decades of precedent, and this budget cycle will be the first one since then to put it to the test. And it did not do anything to improve the quality of life of our state. That's Republican Governor Tommy Thompson in 1991. After using his partial veto power to make a record 457 changes to rewrite the budget. In this budget bill that was sent Starting to me in the way. 1970s, a string of governors found fresh ways to interpret and expand their partial veto power by striking whole paragraphs or single words and digits to dramatically change budget bills that the legislature wrote. So it's more than just a line item veto. It's Former a, it's longtime a state politics journalist and current policy researcher Jason Stein explains courts and amendments eventually started reigning that in most notably with 1990 and 2008 constitutional amendments. It's hard to overstate how powerful at one time, particularly say two decades ago, the partial veto power was and how often it was used. But in 2020, a majority of Wisconsin Supreme Court justices went against decades of court precedent, reversing three out of four of Evers' budget vetoes and setting what could be a new standard for how the partial veto could be used. But in four different opinions, they couldn't agree on what the new standard was. You know, there's not a lot of clarity about what is and isn't possible. Absolutely no agreement on the theory. Uh, there were at least four different theories, each of which had two votes or one vote. With the budget on the Senate floor today, with billions in tax cuts but little in new education spending, this budget could be the first test of how that decision gets applied and almost certainly tested in court. So if you're Governor Evers' lawyers, uh, you're sort of doing what we're doing here, but of course in much more detail, which is trying to guess what the theory is that the Supreme Court will adopt and then tell your, your actions around that. Now the big question, what about those income tax cuts in the current version of the bill? Now it has been a while since the governor could strike out wor or strike out words to make new sentences or insert new words to create new policies, all you know, completely rewrite the law. However, the governor still can strike out digits of numbers. And that's the big question. If he does that, it could be decided in court. Now the governor has six days once this bill hits his desk to either veto the whole thing, sign the whole thing or what's most likely send the vetoed parts back here to the legislature. Naomi, thank you.